All right, let's talk about the Milky Way. All right, l little space. You know, let me let me preemptively spin this UFO, okay? Because it's just fitting, right? I actually didn't know this before uh, looking it up today. Well, actually, I looked this up the other day, but I wanted to talk about it for a little while because I found out about um, I found this article that just came out yesterday about new information about how old the Milky Way is just when it formed and all that kind of fun stuff and I'm like you know what why is it called the Milky Way anyway so I started digging and uh, I found out why it's called the Milky Way but before we get into why let's just talk about the new information that we've been finding out and we've got this timeline now for the Milky Way's biggest events a new analysis of nearly a quarter million stars puts firm ages on the most momentous pages from our galaxy's life story. Far grander than most of its neighbors, the Milky Way arose long ago as lesser galaxies smashed together. Its thick disk, a pancake-shaped population of old stars, originated remarkably soon after the Big Bang and well before most of the stellar halo that envelops the galaxy's disk, astronomers reported uh, March 23rd in Nature. We are now able to provide a very clear timeline of what happened in the earliest time of our Milky Way, says astronomer Mao Sheng Jiang. He and Hans Walter Ricks, both at the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy in Heidelberg, Germany studied almost 250,000 subgiants, uh, subgiants, stars that are growing larger and cooler after using up the hydrogen fuels at their centers. The temperatures and luminosities of these stars revealed their ages, letting the, temp uh, letting the researchers track how different epochs in galactic history spewed stars with different chemical compositions and orbits around the Milky Way's center. There's just an incredible amount of information here, says Rosemary Wise, an astrophysicist at John Hopkins University who was not involved with the study. We really want to understand how our galaxy came to be the way it is, she says. When were, uh, when were the chemical elements of which we were made created? Zhang and Ricks discovered that the Milky Way's thick disk got its start about 13 billion years ago. That's just 800 million years after the universe's birth. That's right. It's old, the Milky Way. The, th uh, the thick disk, which measures 6,000 light years from top to bottom in the sun's vicinity, kept forming stars for a long time until about 8 billion years ago. During this period, the thick disk's iron content shot up 30-fold as exploding stars enriched its star-forming gas, the team found. At the dawn of the thick disk era, a newborn star had only a tenth as much iron relative to hydrogen as the sun. By the end, five billion years later, the thick disk star was three times richer in iron than the sun. Zhang and Ricks also found a tight relation between the thick disk star's age and iron content. This means gas was thoroughly mixed throughout the thick disk. As time went on, newborn stars inherited steadily higher amounts of iron, no matter whether the stars form close to or far from the galactic center. But that's not all that was happening. As other researchers reported in 2018, another galaxy once hit our own, giving the Milky Way most of the stars in its halo, which engulfs the disk SN, uh, which engulfs, engulfs the disk. Halo stars have little iron. The new work revises the date of this great galactic encounter. We found that the merger happened 11 billion years ago, Zhang says, a billion years earlier than thought. As the intruder's gas crashed into the Milky Way's gas, it triggered the creation of so many new stars in our gal uh, galaxy's star formation rate reached a record high 11 billion years ago. The merger also splashed some thick disks stars up into the halo which Zhang and Ricks identified from the star's higher iron abundances. These splash stars, the researchers found, are at least 11 billion years old, confirming the date of the merger. The thick disk 
ran out of gas 8 billion years ago and stopped making stars. Fresh gas around the Milky Way then settled into uh, a thinner disk, which has given birth to stars ever since, including the 4.6 billion year old sun and most of its stellar neighbors. The thin disk is about 2,000 light years thick in our part of the galaxy. The Milky Way has been quite quiet for the past 8 billion years, Yang says, experiencing no further encounters with big galaxies. That makes it different from most of its peers. If the thick disk really existed 13 billion years ago, Xian said that the new James Webb telescope may discern similar disks in galaxies 13 billion light years from Earth, portraits of the Milky Way as a young galaxy. And it does make me think about the fact that the Andromeda galaxy and the Milky Way galaxy are on a collision course. So eventually they're going to collide and that's going to cause even more stars to be created and to be destroyed. And of course, we will probably be long dead by that point because it's not supposed to happen for... Uh, actually, I don't recall. Let me see. When will the Andromeda galaxy collide with the Milky Way? Let us find out, shall we? They are merging eventually. Oh, this was from uh, March 2nd, so this is recent. It has already begun. Interesting. I was not expecting that. I knew that they were on a collision course, but uh, interesting. Here. Uh, the Andromeda Galaxy, the nearest spiral galaxy to our Milky Way, isn't noticeable in our night sky unless you look for it. Under dark skies, however, you can see it without optical aid, but only as barely visible fuzzy patch of light. But one day, far in the future, Andromeda will be bright in our sky, growing larger and larger as it gets closer and closer to us. And even though two galaxies are still 2.5 million light years apart, the eventual merger of our two galaxies has, in fact, already begun. That's cool. All right, I didn't know this, so that's uh, kind of exciting. Let's see, the Andromeda Galaxy is currently racing towards the Milky Way at a speed of about 70 miles per second. With this in mind, our merger will occur 5 billion years from now. Okay, so we got some time. 5 billion years uh, time. But in August 2020, the peer-reviewed astrophysical journal published new research revealing that the collision between our galaxies is already underway. The news about the Andromeda Galaxy came from Project Amiga, which uses the Hubble Space Telescope to look at the deep space surroundings of the Andromeda Galaxy. Amiga stands for Absorption Map of Ionized Gases in Andromeda. Hmm. NASA called it the most comprehensive study of a halo surrounding a galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy, our Milky Way, and other galaxies all sit enshrouded in a large envelope called a galactic halo which consists of gas, dust, and stray stars. The halos of the, the galaxies are faint, so faint, in fact, that detecting them is not an easy feat. These astronomers measured the size of the halo of Andromeda Galaxy by looking at how it, much it absorbed light from background quasars. They were surprised to find that the Andromeda Galaxy's halo stretches much, much further beyond its physical, uh, visible boundaries. Indeed, it extends as far as half the distance to our Milky Way, 1.3 million light years, and even further in all uh, in other directions, up to 2 million light years. Are the halos touched? So does that mean the halos of the Andromeda and the Milky Way galaxies are touching? It turns out that from our vantage point inside the Milky Way, we cannot easily measure the characteristics of our galaxy's halo. However, because the two galaxies are so similar in size and appearance, scientists assume that the halo from the Milky Way would also be similar. In other words, it's the faint halos of the galaxies that indeed appear to have started to touch one another. Thus, in a manner of speaking, the collision between our two galaxies has already started. Now, that was unexpected. I um, That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool to think about. That it's, you know, it's, it's like the... You know when you when you get a vibe of someone, you know you can you can feel like electrostatic in the air, right? And then when you get closer to something, and it, it you know what I mean? It's like someone's aura. It's like our galaxy's aura, and the the 
It's like they're they're just starting to shake hands. Hey, nice to meet you. We're gonna be uh we're gonna be the same thing eventually. We're gonna we're gonna have cosmic sex. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> For lack of better words, you know that's what's gonna happen. Milky Way uh, is gonna be true to its name, and when it meets Andromeda. <laughs> okay, so so I know about why it's called the Milky Way, and you're about to find out. So why do we call it the Milky Way? Hmm. Well. Let's see. Long ago, the Romans named the galaxy Via Lectica, which translates to Road of Milk. The Romans named it Via Lactica precisely because it looks like a patchy, uh, milky patch of sky above the earth at night. But the Romans weren't the first to name the galaxy. The Romans got the name from the Greeks, who called it Galaxia uh, Kiklos, which translates into Milky Circle. According to the Greek myth, Zeus brought his son Hercules home from for Hera to breastfeed while she was sleeping. Hera did not like Hercules, mainly because the child was half mortal and, and was the result of one of Zeus's affairs. When Hera awoke, uh, she quickly pushed Hercules away, which caused a few drops of milk to spill into the night sky. Scientifically, the bright patch of light is the result of looking at the concentrated band of billions of different stars in our galaxies. Uh, in our galaxy, when we look up at the night sky, we are viewing the galaxy on its side. This view creates the glowing arc of light we know as the Milky Way galaxy. Other cultures have different names for the Milky Way. In Germany, the galaxy is called Milstras. The Norwegians call the galaxy Melkevein. Uh, Frank Mars invented the Milky Way candy bar after three years of research in 1923. It was the first filled candy bar. The flavor of the filling was inspired by the chocolate malt milkshake that was popular at the time. When Frank Mars named the candy bar, he named it the Milky Way because of its milkshake-like filling. Hmm. So there you have it. That's why it's called the Milky Way because when people looked up they actually were able to see the entire night sky because they didn't have to deal with light pollution like we do. Um, well, for people who live anywhere close to civilization, if you live out in the middle of uh, anywhere else, what do the Swedes call it? Hey, Nish, what's the Milky Way in Swed Swedish? Vitagaten? The wit winter streak. The winter street. Cool. Wintergarten. The Winter Street. That's pretty cool. All right. There you go. Well, they didn't have that in their article. Ha <laughs> ha. That's right. Try to add to it if I can. So there was cool. That's something pretty cool. I actually learned something new myself just now. I didn't know that uh, Andromeda and the Milky Way have already started uh, mating. Hmm? Right? All right. I'm being a little dirty here.